For today's video, I'm going to show you some accuracy challenges. And what you'll need is, you'll need a piece of paper, it doesn't even have to be a new piece of paper, some tape. I recommend masking tape because it doesn't mark anything and it's easy to come off. Uh, a pair of scissors, and if you want to do the bonus exercise, a cereal box, now a fat one. Now by fat, I mean quite wide. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to tape this to the wall. I recommend head height. Next thing we're going to do is tape some uh, vertical. And some horizontals. Now you don't have to use tape for the vertical and horizontals. You can, if you want to, simply use a marker. But of course, don't go marking a wall that doesn't belong to you. I mean, in my case, I could use like a, a whiteboard marker because then I'll be able to rub it off. Um, so tape is the easiest thing, but maybe you don't have, have that to hand. Even some string. You could put some string, some ribbon, plenty of options. Your first accuracy challenge is to hit the paper and then one above. Hit the paper and one above. Now, it's not as easy as it might, I might make it look, but it's not supposed to be easy. So one above, one below. Um, hit the paper, one above. And then of course the opposite would be hit the paper and one below. Now, you won't be able to do it every single time. And well, maybe you will, but I certainly can't. I haven't practiced enough. It's not so much about what you do, it's what you're trying to do that matters. So, summary. Hit the paper, one above. Hit the paper, one above. Next exercise, hit the paper, one below. Hit the paper, one below. And you probably guess what's coming next. Hit the paper, one to the right. Hit the paper, one to the right. This is harder. It's a little bit like, why does the mirror reflect left and right but not up and down? Going up and down is much easier because it's a smaller change. Going left and right means the ball goes away from you. Up and down, the ball comes back to you. So you'll find that the difference between left and right is significantly harder than up and down. And then of course the next exercise is hit the paper to the left, hit the paper to the left. Now, as I just mentioned, it's not about whether you do it every time, it's your intention, trying to control the ball. Having these targets means that you're focused on something specific, instead of just hitting the ball against the wall, which is good, but having something specific is even better. Now the next exercise is around the paper. Now in that case, I went clockwise, and of course you would do that anti-clockwise. Now the next exercise is just using the vertical lines. All I'm interested in doing is starting at the top and working my way down, and then going back up. Let's see. And of course, I'm sure you've guessed it, the next one is the vertical, uh, the horizontal, sorry. So I'm going to, going to stop here. I'm going to work my way across. See if, well, in fact, I'll start here because it's easier. Uh, 
All right, now I found that one a little bit easier. Now I use an A4 piece of paper because it's about the right size, or it's about the same size as a racket head. The next exercise is just trying to hit the paper. That's really what I'm working on now. You need to count how many you do. I think I did five in a row. My objective would be 10. Ideally, I'll do this. Now I say ideally, because now the paper is looser. I might just do this, because it'll make a sound. Now I could draw a line but the paper makes a sound, and that sound is almost like Pavlova's, uh, Pavlova's dog. <coughs> Where you hear the sound and you make an association. In this case, you hear the sound and you make the association of accuracy. Got about seven or eight there. So those are the main exercises. You can invent any ones you wanted. And in fact, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll remember that I did something very similar on a court with ribbons. And we had a cross and we had a cross on the wall and we had a cross on the floor. Here, it's just a piece of paper on the wall and it's probably a little bit easier for you to do. So now it's time for the sort of the cereal box, the silly one. So let's just get that set up for you. Now this time what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to hit the ball somewhere here. I could even, even leave my piece of paper on if I'd have wanted to. And then what I'm doing, going to do after a few shots is I'm going to try and hit it as softly as possible so the ball goes into the box. The benefit for this exercise is that you learn to take the speed off the ball. You learn to slow the ball down because when you're in the middle of the court, you don't always hit it hard to the front. You might want to take the speed off the ball. It takes a little bit longer to get there, but then it doesn't come back so far. So let me see if I can demonstrate this one. Not, very, not a very good demo, first of all. Last try. Okay, so I didn't have a very successful demo, but uh, the point is that it's fun. I now, I'll be honest with you, I now wanna keep doing it until I've actually accomplished it. And, and I think that that's a real um, important point about any exercise that you do is, do you really wanna do it? After you've finished trying, if you can't do it, is it something you say, no, I, I gotta keep going until I, I I've done it. Now, as far as hitting the, the wall is concerned, you can do as many shots as you want. It's up to you. You can do three or four. You can, I wouldn't recommend just doing one. That wouldn't really be uh, a good thing to do. What's the ball? I wouldn't recommend doing one. And I probably should have told you right at the beginning that I would recommend using a red dot for nearly all of these exercises, simply because you're probably not gonna get the ball very warm and you want something that is quite bouncy compared to what a yellow dot, a double yellow dot would be. So those are the exercises. Now, for one final, final one, if you want to be really accurate, take your piece of paper, take off any sticky things that you've got there, fold it in half, fold it in half again. I feel like I'm on Art Attack or Blue Peter for those people. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut about a ball size. Now that's why it needs to be a piece of scrap paper. So 
a couple of ball ties. And of course now you've got a little hole in it. Okay. All right, so it's pretty obvious what I'm going to do now. I'm going to be aiming for the hole. Think you can do it? Okay, my tape is coming off. I probably should have cleaned the wall a little bit first, probably dirty from all of the rain. So there you have, there you have some ex uh, accuracy challenge challenges. Hopefully that you'll take the time to do that. Uh, feel free to create as many different variations as you want. I mean, I've gone around the clock. Maybe you want to go halfway round and then back around again. And then you want to go up, down, up, down, down, up, up. The choice is yours. These are just some guides, some ideas to get you started. On the screen at the moment is a subscription button. If you think my content is useful, please consider subscribing. There's also a playlist of uh, some other racket skills at home that you might want to try, as well as a U uh, video that YouTube thinks is a good fit for you based on what you've been watching. And remember, do something every single day to improve your scores. See ya.